today i will be taking a topic which is from medicine and which is to be more specific from neurology as far as medicine is concerned we get a lot many questions from ataxias so what i have done today is that i have combined some of the knowledge from the standard textbooks like harrison the cecil the davidsons and philip calder which are the books which are mainly used by students preparing for neat pg fmg the assembly and mrcp examinations so i will be just going through the topic with the most high yield the most frequently asked points and which happen to be examiner's favorite so as far as the ataxias are concerned you have to remember that we have multiple types of ataxias to be more specific the most prominent of them are the cerebellar ataxias the spinocerebellar ataxias ataxia telangiectasia and fredrick's ataxia the topic of reference today is fredrick's ataxia as you can see now what is important about fredrick's ataxia is that you have to remember that many of these ataxias just are transmitted genetically and they are transmitted in the form of multiple triads this fredrick's ataxia happens to be specific in that it is one of the most common inherited form of ataxias and then what autosomal inheritance pattern does it form it form it follows a recessive pattern of inheritance which is given the name as autosomal recessive inheritance pattern so two important things one of the most common inherited ataxias and autosomal recessive pattern of inheritance and in addition you have to remember that there is this chromosome the unlucky chromosome the unlucky chromosome number 13 so chromosome number 13 is very important as it is implicated in the pathogenesis of fredrick's ataxia there might be unstable mutations in this unlucky chromosome which results in the disease known as fredrick's ataxia in addition you have to remember that there is a group of disorders which we give the name as trinucleotide repeat disorders in which there is a repetition of trinucleotide pattern and a very important and frequently asked question what are the trinucleotides repeated and here you can see that gaa the gaa sequences are repeated and the more the repetition the more severe the disease so it is important that fredrick's ataxia is also considered under the group of disorders which we give the name as trinucleotide repeat disorder now there is one important fact pathologically which is the gene involved and the gene involved is the fredrickson gene and what is important about this fredrickson gene is that basically this gene is normally considered in the physiology of iron transport in the cell and the mitochondrial function and any abnormality in the functioning of fredrickson causes altered iron transportation and what it does it just interferes with the mitochondrial function there is mitochondrial mitochondrial dysfunction and there is an increased oxidative injury to the cells so that is the basic pathological mechanism by which the abnormality of the fredrickson gene causes this disorder so these are some of the important points in addition you have to remember that <clears throat> how does this fredrickson ataxia present it usually presents at a young age and what is important about fredrickson ataxia is that the patient presents with abnormalities and abnormalities of what we have to remember that there is this disorder affecting what things very specifically it affects the tracts of the spinal cord and some of the tracts which it affects one of the most important tract is the spinal cerebellar tract cerebellum is concerned with movement and the dysfunction of the cerebellum or the tracts which go within the cerebellum can cause problems in the gait so spinocerebellar tract is 
involved. In addition to this, you have got the dorsal column tracts, which we also give the name as dorsal column medial lemniscal pathway, in which there is the fasciculus gracilis and the fasciculus cuneatus, and the dysfunction of spinocerebellar tracts and the dorsal column medial lemniscal pathway also is affected in addition to the affection of a very important tract which is concerned with fine movements and one of the most important tracts, one of the most important descending tracts in the body that is the pyramidal tract. So three important tracts are affected, the spinocerebellar tract, the dorsal column uh, medial limbs pathway and the pyramidal tract. In addition to that, the peripheral nerves are also affected. So very important these things. These things. And how does the patient present? The patient presents with staggering gait. So there will be a gait abnormality. There will be an abnormality in the walking, in the stance, and in the gait. In addition to that, what will happen to a patient? The patient will be presenting with the complaints of frequent falls. So he will not be, he or she will not be able to maintain a balance. So while walking, the patient might fall towards the side. And then there will be abnormal movement of the head or the body, a condition or a term which is represented by the term which we give the name as titubation. So staggering gait, frequent falls, and titubation are the important features of uh, Frederick's attacks here. They happen to be the fundamental features, neurological features, which you can just get in a neurological examination or from the history as well. Now, why is this Frederick's attacks here important? Because it does not affect only the nervous system. It does not affect these tracts which I mentioned just now or the peripheral nerves. What it affects in action might affect the heart. So in the heart, there might, might be multiple problems and it can also cause multiple deformities in the skeleton or the other body parts. So in the heart, you can be having ventricular hypertrophy and ventricular hypertrophy as well as myocardial fibrosis. So these are very important facts once we consider the patient with Frederick's ataxia. In addition to the neurological examination, you have to go for the cardiological examination and you can have what we call as cardiomyopathy. Cardiomyopathy happens to be a feature in a significant proportion of patients with Frederick's ataxia. So ventricular hypertrophy the basic pathological mechanism which is altered is the myocardium and there will be myocardial fibrosis. So cardiomyopathy is to be taken off because many patients can die as a result of cardiomyopathy. So that's very important from a cardiovascular perspective. Now there can be problems in the speech and there can be various deformities in the foot which we will be coming across foot deformities and there will be problems in the uh, movement of the eyes, a constant abnormal movement of the eyes, the nystagmus. So there will be nystagmus as a feature and in addition to that there might be a problem with the vertebra. There can be various vertebral problems and one of the problems most is the scoliosis and as you can see this is a radiograph which is presented in the uh, a slide over here and well you can appreciate the abnormal curvature of the spine so this is a scoliosis of the spine which is present in here and this can be given as an image based question in the form of uh, as a adjunct to the Frederick's attacks here, while you can have this image based question and you can be having some features in action. And this will give you an idea that how a patient with Frederick's attacks here can present. Now, once we do a neurological examination, again, we come back to the same facts which I just mentioned nystagmus, dysarthria, dysmetria, ataxia, and you can just find these uh, findings once you talk to the patient, once you examine the patient. Uh, so that is done with. In action, on neurological examination, we can find the planters and the planters which will be here will be the extensor planters response. So there will be an extensor planter response and there will be absence of deep tendon reflex. On doing the tendon reflexes, we'll be seeing that the deep tendon reflexes will be absent and there will be weakness which is greater distally than proximally in the limbs. So these are some of the various important points which you have to consider in the neurological examination and in the features which will come in the form of a clinical scenario. As I mentioned to you, the dorsal column medial lemniscal pathway, which is concerned with the transmission of position and vibration, there will be problems in the position and vibration. So once you do the testing, there might be a loss of 
position and vibration sense. So these are some of the important facts which you come across in the Fredericks attacks here patients. You can be having different combinations of features. So it is not necessary that the patient will be presenting with all the features, but you have to remember these features as far as your examination is concerned. So cardiac involvement is high occurs. The high percentage of cases, as previously mentioned, cardiomegaly. So cardiomyopathy can manifest in the form of cardiomegaly, an increased size of the heart, symmetric hypertrophy will be there, and there will be murmurs and conduction defects of various types. Now, in action, in, as I mentioned in the foot, you can be having various deformities, and the various deformities can be in the form of pes cavus and pes equine virus and scoliosis, as I have already mentioned in the previously and shown in the previous diagram. So over here, you can see what can be asked in the pathology is what uh, you can be given a slide, and there will be a clinical scenario associated with this uh, patient with an inherited form of ataxia, autosomal recessive, affecting the chromosome 13, and having features which can be explained over there and there will be this slide. So over here you can see that there is a ventricular muscle hypertrophy as well as myocardial fibrosis. So this is cardiomegaly pathologically. So there's an increase in the uh, musculature over here in the slide. So that's how a patient with uh, cardiomegaly manifests pathologically. In addition, you can see over here, there is this the pescavus deformity you can see the arch of the foot which is exaggerated and this exaggerated arch is a very important feature of Frederick's attacks here many a patients present with pescavus deformity as you can see so this is a uh, this is an exaggerated uh, arch of the foot which is given the name as pescavus if in case the sole of the foot is plain we give you the name as pes planus and here in there is an exaggeration of the arch of the foot and this is here you can just see over here this is over here and this is already shown by a dotted line in here this is the pes cavus deformity an important cofactor in Frederick's attacks here now going back to a bit of pathology revising it the primary sites of pathology happen to be with the spinal cord the dorsal root ganglia the peripheral minerals as previously mentioned and there might be associated atrophy of the hind brain in the form of cerebellar atrophy and the cerebral gyri may also be having a showing signs of atrophy. In addition, sclerosis and degeneration occur in the spinal cerebellar tracts, as is previously mentioned, and the lateral corticospinal and the posterior columns. Now, in addition to that, there can be isolated lesions, there can be atrophy of the nuclei of some of the cranial nerves, especially the cranial nerve nuclei of the last four cranial nerves. And you can see the glossopharyngeal, the vagus, the hypoglossal nuclei can also show signs of atrophy. And this is very important to remember as far as the Frederick's ataxia is concerned. Now, you can again be asked as an image based question from radiology that how a patient with Frederick's ataxia presents. So you can see over here, this is the MRI of the brain and the spinal cord. And here you can appreciate, especially at the lower cervical part, that there's an atrophy of the spinal cord. So you might be given the spinal cord is not well delineated and it shows a, a, a sign of atrophy in the distal segment as shown over here. So this is what is asked radiologically from Frederick's ataxia. So sum up as far as the Frederick's ataxia is concerned, you have to remember some of the important facts, autosomal recessive inheritance pattern, chromosome 13, the posterior columns, the spinocerebellar tracts, the pyramidal tract, the peripheral nerves affected, and the signs like the falling, not a stable gait, and other features like nystagmus, dysarthria, dysmetria, uh, which are associated, and the involvement of multiple systems like the heart in the form of cardiomegaly, like the skeletal system, scoliosis, and pes cavus. These happen to be most high yield points, and they are asked. There are many more features to it, but this is what is expected from you as far as the NEAT PG and FMG examinations are concerned. Thanks a lot.